Hi everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. And today we are in our kitchen garden or what is going to become a kitchen garden. It's still all a work in progress and a big experimental laboratorium. Uh, we are still not sure of what we're doing. And uh, one of the things that maybe is one of the biggest problems is that we keep forgetting to eat the produce that we've yeah. had in this garden. And also there's another problem, we travel too much. So like we have um, redic, radish, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of radish and champagne in the beginning of the summer. <laughs> yes, we but did. But then we went away and I don't, don't know what is happening, but maybe it's the light or maybe it's the climate up here. Like you go away for a few days and then you're back and they're all blooming mm. and you can't eat radish when it starts blooming because so it gets very hard over here we have like a lot of radish that is just blooming right now but we let them be here for a while maybe we get seeds i don't know this looks like it could be seeds in them yeah and we have never had so much radish radish blooming before and then we have the sweet i think is it sweet peas yeah i think so and we were very late this year because i don't know the traveling so hopefully we will have some mm, before but these are good yeah mm. have before some before they disappear mm, they're really good and we also have had some cabbage and stuff but we have problems with insects and we read somewhere that you can use uh, targetes what's the english is it marigold marigold because someone or we read somewhere that marigold is good with cabbage for example because they keep those insects away but it didn't work up here so next year we would try to put like this curtain over it and see if that helps and we would also look into what kind of flowers you can grow with vegetables to get rid of those insects yeah and while you're talking I'm enjoying my um, <laughs> sweet peas yeah. but uh, anyway yeah we've been trying and uh, failing um, we've got broccoli here that we forgot to eat and it just kept growing and growing and now you can see it's just bloom blooming so it's really bad mm. i think we have to we have to work more on this next year and but if I, I think i think like if there's any people and anybody out there who know what kind of flowers you can grow with vegetables to keep those insects away we're grateful if we can yeah. get that and then we have this one which is so beautiful and luckily we will have some seeds there and I brought this book because I can't remember. I think it's a eatable, I think it's a eatable chrysanthemum. I haven't tried it. But, but what do you eat, the leaves or? That I don't know. If, if it's the flower or if it's the leaves, but it's called eatable chrysanthemum, chop soy. Oh, really? I, I don't think it looks like a chop soy, but this is something we got in 2016. And I thought they were dead, but I put them in, in soil oh. and they grew. I even kept, they came in this beautiful paper. So I wrote what it was and I blew the paper in my book because it's so nice. But they are very beautiful. But they're very decorative. For and sure. I, and I also we have some sweet peas with them. So I think next year, I think we should have this with like a bamboo stick and sweet peas so they can mm. climb on the flowers. I think that will be nice. Yeah. And then we also have, we had some potatoes there, but uh, I don't know what happened. They are, the grass is so low and they haven't bloomed yet, but we have to look into it and see if there's yeah. some potato, potatoes there. So the kitchen garden is a work in progress. Um, we're gonna try one more time next year. We're gonna try to stay home more in the summer and we're gonna have to remember to eat all this stuff yeah. before the insects do. And, and the plan is to make a kitchen garden on all this space mm -hmm. with this uh, pallet bark, yeah this bark the frames and the bark yeah. we just heard uh, this summer from a niece that she was using bark in between the beds to keep the weeds away so we're also trying it we don't know if it worked yet but we will try it we'll try yeah and we've been driving back and forth to a factory to a um, sorry a wooden S mill a sawmill. Wooden mill, a sawmill to pick this up here we've got cabbage and some, I think, it's a rhubarb. rhubarb. <laughs> and what do we have here? This Arti was uh, Jorskok. Yeah, um, Jerusalem artichoke. No, yes. no, not Jorskok. No? Uh, 
Oh, the white one, you make soup of them. Jerusalem artichoke, yes. Is it that? Jordskok. Okay. Yeah. Jordskok. It's Jerusalem artichoke, which doesn't look like an artichoke. It no, looks like, like a white, a white potato. Pota no, not like a white carrot. Yeah. Well, it's brown. And you no, can this peel is what, this is not artichoke. It's not. Jordskok. No. No. The one you make the soup that is so good. Jordskok. No. It's not one. Well, that's the soup I make, Arne. I make Jerusalem artichoke soup and I don't make any other soup. Cauliflower, broccoli. No, well, this is then this is something totally different. <laughs> well, shall we shall we take a look? <laughs> They're small yet. Oh, nepe. Pasternak. Oh yeah, pasternak. Pasternak. Yeah, okay. But I, they're, they're very small. I don't think that yeah. there will be some. I don't make soup of this, but this is actually quite good. This is yummy. Mmm. But so, there's turnip. Sauce. Turnip. I don't know, but it's very small. My grandmother grew grew this up in the mountains, so I thought they could work here as well. But but look, I don't know. The, they're tiny, but the smell oh, is really so potent. It's wonderful. And then mm. the, the other thing with the kitchen garden is that. It's a railway station, so there's hardly no soil. So we are using these frames and then we put a lot of soil in them. We had one over there where we used the cow, what do you call that? Like manure? Manure, the compost. Yeah. And the radish over there were so big and so good, but now they're all eaten. And the idea is that this is kind of like the first frame is kind of the, the, like the foundation of the kitchen garden. And now we will put this bark mm. in between and we will put another frame on top. Yeah. So the garden will grow up. upwards. Yeah. And I got two new frames. So we will put frame. And another reason why we will put the frames is that when you start working in these frames, we don't want to have the soil coming into the bark. So it's a nice mm. way to keep it cleaner. And I think we can also go to the, the renovation place and pick up all the windows yeah. and use them on top. Yeah. So our plans now are to prepare this for next year. We are going to continue putting the bark on the paths and then we are going to go and study and get some advice and some help to figure out what we can do yeah. to what to plant with how to plant it and how to prevent the insects from eating it and then of course the fact that we have to remember to use this we can't just let it grow and not eat it obviously this is uh this was a catastrophic the shop what do you call pak it choy? Pak, pak choy there was a lot of pak choy here and we forgot to eat it and now it's only flowers but mm. i could we can put on one of the frames so you can see how it will change. Okay, so like on, on this one where we had the red radish, the champagne food. So when we have the basement like one, we just put a new one on top and you see we will have much deeper beds as, as they grow like this. And then the bark will come, come maybe up to here somewhere. Yeah. And, and now when you have that frame, then you can start to dig the soil and you can start to remove the weeds. And then we have this. this. To put. It's so nice, you can take it like this. I like to work with it. And then we put that. We remove some of the weeds and then we put this in between. And we don't know if it worked. We can tell you next autumn, next fall, mm -hmm. if it worked. We don't know yet. But well, hopefully. Hopefully. And our niece, she had started this early in the spring, so she will probably tell her, tell us what yeah. she experienced with it. And hopefully we'll start earlier this next year so that we get a really nice... Uh... But you see, you get a really nice clean garden mm -hmm. and with an extra frame, you don't get the soil into the bark. Yeah, so... So we have a lot of... A lot of work to do, work to do. and I think we're getting there. And I think that next year when we start doing this properly, 
uh, we will gain a lot of experience and we'll be able to share this with you as well as maybe some useful tips that we don't have right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a beginning and uh, it looks promising and we just have yeah. to be optimistic. But before we have had success with potatoes, we had a lot of potatoes. We have One year we had so much squash that we had to give it away because we couldn't eat all of it. Mm. But I don't remember now if we had those, that white curtain over the squash. Yeah. Maybe we did. I don't remember because it's so long ago before we traveled so much. Yeah. So, so if, you, if, you, um, if you have some good tips for us, uh, we would definitely read them. So put them in the comments uh, down below. Any tips you have uh, for keeping insects from eating our produce, uh, we will be very appreciative. We are trying to make an organic garden, a kitchen garden. We don't want to put any pesticides in here. No. So we have to find natural ways of preventing the insects of eating these things. Yeah, they don't, to. apparently they don't like these peas. No, they don't because eat those. The peas are quite good and quite intact. It's the cabbage and the um, cauliflower. Mm. And um, yeah, that's it. And we have the compost. This year's compost. The, book, the earth factory. So this is the earth, this is the earth factory from last summer and last winter. This is this spring. And this one, will, if we need, we have to put on a frame or two more. And then we will use this in the winter. So when we empty these uh, Bokashi buckets, they go into this one. Mm. And like this time of the year, we will put soil on top. In the winter, we just put the compost and it freeze. And then in the spring, we put soil on top again. And then the composting starts over again. Mm. So this is the earth factory. Yep. And now we put the factories where we want to have the beds. So we have planned it more this time. Mm. I know, I, I don't know, Carlos, is there more to say? Or Not yet. We start carrying bark. But this will be, yes, we'll continue carrying the bark and this is to be continued and uh, hopefully we'll be more successful next year. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you become a subscriber and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Um, and yeah, get on our newsletter and go to arnicarlis.com and you'll find a lot of patterns there if, for your knitting and your crocheting needs. And again, if you have any tips for us about uh, getting, uh, keeping the insects away in a natural way, we are looking forward to reading yeah. them. Put them in the comments down below. So thank you so much for watching yeah. and see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.